You get back out on the road. It's a game against Purdue. It's senior day in ross Aid Stadium. You know you're going to get a team fired up regardless of the fact that they've lost four straight games going in there. But it comes down to something we talk about every week on this show, especially on the road, turnovers. You can't have them. Yeah, we can't do that. And, you know, you have to take advantage of opportunities, which, you know, we didn't do. Uh, to their credit, they did a lot of good things. Uh, you know, them losing four in a row, I'm sure, you know, they were a little bit more focused than maybe ever. And uh, it was a tough football game. Still had a chance at the end, which is what you want, yeah. especially on the road. And didn't get it done. Yeah, well, don't be fooled by four losses in a row. They were by a total of ten points. I mean, this is a right. pretty good Purdue team, a real good uh, defense out there. And we'll talk more about the second half a little later in the show. But when you come out in this game, the way it sets up, I mean, obviously you know what they're going to have coming at you. And you got to try to find some sort of way to get it started just a little sooner. Yeah, you know, we thought we came out after the first set, after the first drive where we sparred a little bit and punted back and forth. We thought that next drive was pretty darn good. And then that third drive, when we dropped a couple balls and that type of thing, uh, then all of a sudden uh, the momentum and so forth turned against us, and it took us a while to get it back. Well, tough place to play there, Ross Aid Stadium, as the Buckeyes take the field here. Sellout crowd on hand facing the Purdue Boilermakers, trying to make it back-to-back -back wins on the road. So you bring in Shane Olivier as the honorary captain. Uh, Shane is starting tackle for the San Diego Chargers now, and he, they had an open date, and so he flew in, and we were awful happy about that, and also happy about this run by Troy Smith here. and, and uh, playing hard and, and getting after him on that first, uh, on that actually the second drive. Yeah, 18 yards on the pickup and he doesn't go down on the play and then you get Ted Ginn involved. Here we had a little uh, shovel option type thing and Ted did a good job and he picked up about 19 there and, and we're moving the chains. Absolutely, next play up is a 12 yard screen complete to Maurice Hall. Well, Maurice uh, got close to the first down. We ended up being fourth and two after the play, but Mike Nugent steps up and hits a 44-yarder, and, and uh, you've got to be amazed at his consistency. Absolutely. 44-yard field goal is good. Ohio State is up 3 to nothing, 17 out of 20 on the season for Mike Nugent. A good job by the defense there, led by Bobby Carpenter, and they get, were getting after him pretty well there as they, Purdue was trying to run it up in, and here they did break a couple tackles, which, you know, we talked about the fact that and we can't have missed tackles if we're going to hold people to, to uh, less than 13 points, which is our goal. Here they ran a little bit of a, a boot play, and we're getting good pressure on them, and Anthony Schlegel on the, st on the sack. Seven-yard loss on the play, and uh, putting some pressure uh, would be key on this day, and something some teams had done, uh, some zone blitzing for runs intended. Well, right there, you see a zone blitz by Anthony and A.J., and forced them to kick a field goal, and they did just that, and we've got a 3-3 game. Yeah, 33-yard field goal from Ben Jones. That knots it at three apiece. Moving to second quarter action. Again, our offense wasn't doing a great job of keeping things going, and E.J. Underwood almost made a pick that would have gone the other direction. Uh, he did a good job of breaking it up. That would have been pick six the other way, but then back comes Purdue, 14 yards complete to Taylor Stubblefield. Good conversion on third down. Here in this stretch of the game, they did a good job on third, plus they had a little misdirection pass and found... Uh, the big tall receiver Ingram there in the end zone and all of a sudden it's 10 to 3. Yeah, Kyle Ingram for a touchdown and that is the count, a touchdown lead and back on defense are the Bucks. Marcus Green in there on the hit, uh, Quinn Pitcock, Mike Kudla, uh, guys are hustling around, swarming around. Good job there by Mike Kudla breaking up the little misdirection pass. Yeah, second and seven, bats down that pass and uh, we'll skip ahead a series. The Robbie Carpenter, how about this? A heck of a job there on again on a zone blitz and putting pressure on him and moving him backward. Loss of nine on the play, huge sack there, but a 19-yard pickup on a second and seven play. Again, we've got to do a, a better job of the consistency of the pressure and the coverage and I give them credit. They executed. Here they've got a little bit too much time and a great job by their tall wide receiver making the play. Yeah, big hit there, but he's able to hang on and get in the end zone first and 10 from the 15, and he takes it for 15 yards. Here you see a little misdirection play. Troy Smith finds Ryan Hamby and moving the ball down right before the half, trying to make something happen as we go. Yeah, especially knowing that uh, Purdue is going to get the ball to start the second half. There you go to uh, six yards complete to Holmes for a first down. Here we had a little bit of pressure and uh, unfortunately got a sack. Loss of six on the play and uh, for all intents and purposes takes you uh, out of field goal range there. So you've got to go up top and see if you can just 
get one to go there right before the well, end. Well, that's right. You, you never stop going after it, and, and now we go into the locker room at 17-3, to three and we've got to figure out, you know, just what we've got to do to get back in this football game in their stadium. It appeared uh, coming into this game, uh, especially the way you came out offensively, that uh, there was some figuring on how to get Ted Ginn in there. Uh, did you count how many different slots and H-backs and different places, tailback, you could get him in? Well, we, we tried to get as many ways that we could uh, get him in to get him the ball and get him in to have them keep an eye on him. And, you know, that's something when you have a skillful guy like Ted that, you know, he can do a lot of different things. and, and uh, you know, we'll continue to work on that. You saw uh, the tape on Purdue coming in here and some people able to get some pressure and get some sacks on Purdue. Very important to win the line of scrimmage, even though it's a spread offense team. If you can control that line of scrimmage and get some pressure on the quarterback, huge difference. Well, it really is, and, and you got to take them out of their rhythm and, and not allow them just to stand in and throw it and pick you apart and so forth. And I thought our guys, you know, did that fairly well. They came up with some big plays, but as you'll see in the second half, uh, I think our defense really got sync. Well, that is exactly what we have on tap. It was a tale of two halves. We're back with that. We are set to talk second half football with Ohio State head football coach Jim Tressel. And coach, um, the way you came out and played in the second half, you'd think there was something going on there in there at halftime, some sort of adjustments. Well, you know, I think our guys have a lot of pride and, and, and belief in each other, and they were going to go out and prove to one another, if nothing else, that... Uh, and we can play with Purdue, and we can play better than Purdue, and let's go prove it. Yeah, the message getting across, you got to play a full 60, especially on the road in the Big Ten. That is exactly what the Bucks come out and do. Uh, this first play is going to be first and 10 from the 20, and Purdue is going to have a pass tipped, but completed to Taylor Stubblefield here, but not really setting the tone because the defense really shut them down in the second, uh, in the third quarter and start of the second half. Here. They really did. Our guys came out, and I, they may have made some minute adjustments and so forth, but I think it was more a matter of we won the line of scrimmage. As you see it there, you see Marcus Green and Quinn Pitcock and Ashton Yabotis up there, and and our guys took it to them in that third quarter. There's definitely a stop short of the first down there. But back on offense here, Troy Smith, a, a pass, you know, a catchable ball from Devin Lyons. He'd like to have that one back. Yeah, that was just a short route. I think we were second long there and, and uh, trying to get half of it. And uh, we had the mistake, but our defense stepped up and put pressure. Simon Frazier, um, A.J. Hawk. Bobby Carpenter in there, and, and they handled that sudden change. Yeah, great big sack. Loss of six there, so no points exchanged on the uh, turnover there. No harm done. Come back with a little option play there. Troy finds Antonio Pittman and, and uh, came up with uh, 18 yards or so and, and start to get a little bit of momentum, get things moving a little bit. Troy's got plenty of time there. He finds Devin Lyons. It's good to see Devin uh, step in and, and uh, catch that one for a big first down. Then Troy's back and finds Santonio Holmes. What a great catch that was. Great concentration. And uh, all of a sudden, it's a 17-10 game. And you could really feel that we had seized the tempo of the game. Completely and absolutely shutting down Purdue uh, on offense. A lot of three and outs for them, uh, keeping the offense with some momentum on the field. And Troy Smith leading the attack. Yeah, good field position. Now we're back running the option. Then we're back throwing. Here you see a good job by Roy Hall. Uh, he turns this into a 41-yard gain. Uh, make sure he protects that ball, and, and uh, it's a heck of a big play. Great big pickup on first and 10 there. Crosses over midfield. You pick up 40-plus yards. Troy Smith, you're going to change ends here and turn into uh, the fourth quarter and uh, turnover in the red zone. Yeah, we can't have that. That was a third down, and, you know, the thing we've got to understand is if there's nothing open, let's just take Mike Nugent's leg and move it to 17-13. And we didn't do that, and... and uh, you know, we've got to learn from that. Well, Quinn Pickcock learned quickly, and uh, he is just spying the crossing pattern there. Good job by Quinn, and all of a sudden now we've got the football down inside the 35-yard line, and, and now we have a chance to go get some points. All of a sudden you've got a 295-pound running back there. That's right. Not, and, and not bad move. <laughs> here we had a little bit of a reverse, and, and this was a big run by Teddy Ginn, and good job T.J. Downing out in front, and now we're down there knocking at the door. Yeah, 28 yards on the reverse, and uh, knocking is exactly what you say, but uh, it's not the answer at the door that you were looking for. No, it really isn't. Uh, you know, it didn't look as if we were going to be able to score on the play, so what we've got to do again is, is just take our points, and, and uh, you know, all of a sudden it would have been 17-16 if we'd have had uh, two less mistakes, but, you know, nevertheless, you move on, and, and Troy Smith had great protection there, and he found Anthony Gonzalez, and now again we're moving down the football field, and and uh, you know, our guys are doing a good job. They're competing hard. 
Here you see a little bit of a rollout play, and Troy decided to take it in on his own, and great effort. You yeah. know, and that's what you love about Troy Smith. He, he's physical, he's tough, and he wants to win, and, and uh, all of a sudden now we have a tie football game. Yeah, they're banging right down there on that goal line, and that's a huge third down conversion to Gonzalez as well. So 17-17, you're back on defense, and uh, Kyle Orton in the game, who you prepared for all week long, and uh, here's why they can be a dangerous team with him. Well, they're a good football team with, with either quarterback, but Kyle has a lot of a lot of poise and a lot of patience, and he, I think, was seven for eight on this drive or seven for seven or something like that, and he came up with a big misdirection play that, that uh, turned into a touchdown, and what we needed to do then was take it back down and try to get it into overtime, and uh, unfortunately, we didn't do that. We came up uh, with our fourth turnover of the night, and uh, if you turn the ball over four times against Purdue, you're not going to win. And that's what it turned out to be, 24-17, the score. Uh, at this point as Purdue has a chance to run the clock out here. Uh, so a disappointing way that that ends because of the toughness. Uh, that was a gutsy second half performance by the Bucks. Yeah, the kids played hard. You know, they really did. They never gave up and they never lost confidence in each other, the offense and the defense or the defense in the offense. And, you know, that, that was a tough one for them. But, uh, you know, they'll grow from it. We'll grow from it. And, and uh, you know, those experiences on the road make you better. Well, it hurts a little more uh, for the guys talking to them after the game about, uh, you know, having the opportunities, lots of opportunities to win the game. Right. Well, that's, I think, when you're most disappointed is when you know that you could have done better, you know that you had the opportunity to do better, and we just didn't get that done. And, and uh, you know, that'll give us a chance to to learn from that and, and become a much better football team, and we need to do it this week. Yeah, some of the penalties, uh, you know, they're not fun to look at on tape, a little bit boring, but they were certainly there. And, uh, you know, the yardage situations that you get yourselves into, the manageable distances and unmanageable distances. Well, especially against a good defense. You know, when you're back there second and 15 or first and 20 or whatever it happens yeah. to be, that, that makes it, you know, tough duty. But again, uh, we better learn from it. Yeah. One of your seniors has come alive here in the last couple of weeks, Simon Frazier, a little visit with him.